Hey, welcome back everybody. So this is the third video in this uh, lecture series on uh, introductory econometrics. In this video, we're going to be really learning about research design. Okay, so, you know, running a regression is just really one smallish step in, in really doing a research project. And so we're going to talk about each of those in turn. Uh, and then we're going to be talking a little bit, we're going to sort of run a hypothetical regression to sort of form the basis for some additional conversation about research design. And then at the end, we're going to introduce this idea of dummy variables, which I'll talk about when we get to that. You know, when we do research, right, re when we do regression analysis, right, that's really one part and, and, a, and a fairly small part of a, of a much larger and, and very important process of doing research. Over here, we see really the steps in that project, and we can see that estimating the value of the equation, actually running the regression, is only only one of these steps. Uh, and so, what I want to do in this lecture is touch on each of these in turn. And okay, so the first step in any research project is first to review the literature and develop the theoretical model. So what we're doing here is we're looking at you know what have other people had to say about the research question that we are thinking about undertaking. And that's really important because you know first off you know we don't want to reinvent the wheel here you know we're asking you know why does this thing happen and it turns out that you know somebody already figured that out 10 15 years ago well there's no need for us to do that uh, we may find out too when we're researching the literature that yeah the research question that we were interested in has already been answered but oh but there was this little thing about it that 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 I'm still curious about okay well great now now we really have some place where we can add to knowledge in this area. Okay, so that's sort of the first reason why we do this. There are, of course, other reasons as well, right? You know, what kind of data did they use to solve this problem? And we might find like, oh my gosh, thank goodness I found out about that data because otherwise I didn't know how I was going to go about doing this. Or we might find out, oh my gosh, that data is so old now, we want to make sure to update it and, and you know, hopefully we can go back and find the same source but just updated data. Uh, we also want to, you know, learn about, you know, how did they construct their model and, and why did they do it that way? I mean, do we think that that makes sense? Were there any problems that they encountered with that model? You know, how did they get around them? Is there something that maybe we could do so we don't encounter those problems? Again, <clears throat> doing a good literature review, read, being familiar with, with, what people, the work that people have already done in this area allows us to stand on their shoulders, okay, rather than standing on the ground they were standing on. And, you know, that's just how we, good research is done, right? We should, we should always be building upon uh, what's already been done. Right. All right, so second step is to start thinking about specifying the model. And what we mean by that is, you know, what, what should the model look like? What should the elements of the model be? What independent variables should we use and how are they going to be measured, right? So we, let's say we're trying to explain X, well, how are we going to, you know, what variables do we think are going to explain variations in X? Well, those are our independent variables. What do we think the relationship between those variables and the variable we're trying to explain are? You know, is it a linear relationship? Like every time this goes up by four, that goes up by one, something like that. Maybe it's a logarithmic relationship. We also need to think about what are the properties of the error term, right? So uh, our OLS uh, regression analysis is, is, is requires certain assumptions about the nature of the error term. And if, 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 if those assumptions aren't going to fit uh, what, what, we think, what we think the error term is going to look like, then, then you know, maybe we need to, to use a, utilize a different methodology, right? So we need to be thinking about what, what that the hypothesized relationship of the error term to the dependent variable is, right? Okay. Now, it's important that we really take our time here because mistakes here, uh, so mistakes in the specification of the model um, are going to really damage our regression results, right? And they're going to make it to make them really not relevant. And in, in really bad scenarios, right, it could actually lead us to think we know something that isn't correct. Um, so we could, we could run our regression and think like, oh my gosh, you know, we've, we've figured out exactly what's causing this. And it turns out that, that, that we're not right, and that's because our model was, was misspecified. So this is one of those places where the literature can be extremely helpful uh, mm -hmm. in sort of thinking carefully about what these relationships are between these different variables. Yes. 
<clears throat> once we've started sort of building some basic structure around what we think our, our model should look like, you know, we want to start hypothesizing what we would expect those relationships to be, right? So if this thing goes up, does that thing go up? Or if this thing goes up, does this thing go down, right? So do we expect those signs here, right? If I describe this, do we expect this to be a positive relationship? This would implies, right, if this goes up, this is going to go up, right? Or is it, you know, maybe a negative relationship? This goes up, this goes down, right? We want to be thinking to, you know, what does economic theory say about these types of relationships? Now, as I mentioned in the previous video, just because a sign, even hypothesized or estimated sign, goes against economic theory does not necessarily mean that you've done something wrong, okay? Uh, but it does tell you that it that that is going to require additional scrutiny. Um, you're going to have to think real carefully about whether that result is right. And you're going to have to test uh, a little bit to see whether that, that makes sense or not. Okay, once we've specified the model, we've hypothesized the relationships of the variables, uh, then we can start thinking about cleaning, collecting and cleaning the data. Now, uh, if you're working with a well test so data set that's been used a lot right in a lot of different work um, it should be relatively clean already okay it should be relatively tidy i don't really like we say clean the data right so i don't want to lead you astray but but i really don't like that word because to me it always implies seems to imply some kind of malfeasance or something like that but that's not what we're doing when we're cleaning the data what we're doing is uh is we're really making it tidy, making the data tidy. Uh, you know, I I try to keep this video short, but I'll tell a quick short story here. My first job as an economist, you know, way back in the early night or mid 1990s, was for the state of Colorado, and I was working for I was working on uh, uh, digitizing a bunch of healthcare data and then doing some analysis of that. And uh, I can remember we would get these lines of data that would be like. You know heart attacks in a county whatever right and it would be like 12 14 16 these are like years right and then 32 and 24 and then h <laughs> like, how can you have h number of heart attacks <laughs> but that's what was in the data right uh, and then we'd have to go and figure we call right like the county health people and be like what's h right in the why is this h in the data this is what it means to clean uh, clean the data okay right so you know, when you do regression analysis, you do research, um, you know, always remember that at the end of the day with data, there was just somebody filling out a form at the end of the day at work that they didn't feel like filling out. Um, you know, some of you have done that, right? You're like, how many potatoes did you peel today? Uh, 42, okay, right? You know, that that's not, that's, I don't mean to be cynical, right? Or, or suggest that that doesn't mean you can't do good data analysis, but just remember that, that, that these are all human processes, okay? All right. Um, and a couple other things, more observations is generally better, almost always better than less, right? And we would check for outliers. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about processes for removing outliers later on, right? So this is not the final word on that. Uh, you don't always want to remove outliers, um, but uh, you want to be looking at them. Um, Again, stupid, stupid story. I can remember housing data. Actually, in the other little video, is I used this housing data set that we used years ago for some work, and I can remember we had a couple houses that had like forty-two bedrooms, <laughs> and uh, like, that can't be right. <laughs> and it turned out they they were hotels, right? Somebody had misclassified the data as the as it being a single-family house. <laughs> okay, so you know that's what I mean, right? You got to kind of go through the data and kind of look at it and. You know, see what's going on because you know if you have some some weird things in there, it can really throw off your work. Um, okay, so once we've done all that, we've got this. So we first remember first we're going to look at what everybody else did, then we're going to um, construct a model, right? Then we're going to collect and clean data, right? Once we've done all those things, okay, now we're going to estimate and evaluate the equation. So we're going to run the regression, okay. We're going to look at the initial results and you know does it does do those results suggest some major error with our work or does it suggest that we're sort of on the right track okay 
probably not going to get it perfect the first time out. Okay, I'll just warn you, right? Probably not going to go through this once. You're probably going to get to this step sort of four, right? And then you're going to go back to two, maybe even back to one, okay? Um, that's just the way it goes, right? Research is slow. Okay, then the last step we're going to do is we're going to document the results, right? And, and here your, you just, your text talks about documenting the results. I'm going to suggest you, you document everything, right? You're going to document every step that you do. Uh, and the reason why you're going to do that is <clears throat> because for your own reason, right? You may come back to this three years later and be like, oh my gosh, you know, what, what did we do here, right? But even beyond that, you know, future researchers, uh, they don't need to reinvent the wheels that, that you're building right now either. Uh, and if you don't document your work, right, you're not going to allow them to build upon the work that you've done. You're, they basically have to do your work again. Uh, so that's not cool, right? So you, you don't want to do that. So you want to be documenting throughout. Okay, now, you know, here over there, right, you can all read this, right? So I'm not going to spend a huge amount of time talking about this. This is your estimated regression output. It looks pretty much like what we saw in the last video, but this is sort of the normal way to document this estimated equation there on top, right? Then the estimated standard error in beta, right? So that 0 0.62 is the standard, excuse me, the estimated standard error in that beta 1 in this case above it, 5.48. Right, so the standard error is that that thing's going to be, that's going to have this curve around it, right, of 0.62, and then we have our T stat associated with that, right, so 6.45 in this case. Okay, uh, below those we have our number of observations, in this case 105. So that means we've got 105 data points that we've observed. Okay, and then finally our adjusted R squared, which we talked about in the previous video. So. Having done all that, you know, let's let's sort of <laughs> let's sort of play through this, right? Okay, so we're gonna use regression analysis to pick a restaurant location. So where should we put our restaurant? All right. Well, what does the literature say about where you should put restaurants? Right? Is the literature like, hey, always put your restaurant in the middle of a lake? <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm just I'm just being silly to keep myself entertained right now, right? But for sure, there's a literature on sound and unsound practices for restaurant location. There's probably a bunch of empirical work that's been done to see, figure out whether, you know, that's right or not. Um, what, what does that have to say, right? Okay, so step two then, let's specify our model. And again, this is, I'm not implying this is a good model, all right? This is just, just going through it here, right? Okay, so N, we're gonna say, we're gonna say the model looks like this. And we're gonna say there's a number of competitor firms within th three kilometers radius of where we think we wanna locate, okay? P is the population or the number of people within five kilometer radius and I is the income. So it's the average income of people within that population radius. All right, so basically what our model is saying is we think that uh, restaurant location is a function of how many other restaurants are there, are there, how many people there are, and how rich those people are. Okay, could do a lot worse, for sure. Let's hypothesize the expected signs of those coefficients. Go ahead, pause this video and do that right now. If population goes up, does, does your restaurant do better? What about competitors? Okay, all right, yeah. All right, then when we're going to gather the data, right, we're going to clean it all up. Let's say we run that regression, and here's what here's what we estimate. Okay, so we say that the variation in y, right, again that i there should be a lowercase next to y hat. Uh, I don't know. PowerPoint likes to capitalize. Uh, is equal to 102. So that's our that's our intercept there. That first term 102192. Okay, then our estimated beta one on our variable n, which was our number of competitors, is 9075. And you notice a negative sign in there, which, which is telling us that our estimated regression results saying that as competitors goes up, restaurant success goes down. Okay, kind of makes sense. All right, second thing, beta two, 335p, Okay, oh, positive sign. So as the population goes up, as there's more people, our restaurant is more successful. <laughs> okay. As income goes up, beta three, one, two, two, or one, two, eight, eight, excuse me, 
restaurant improves, right? Okay. Below that, we see the standard error. So we can you can see that 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 for for some of those, like the first one, it's, it's quite large, right? Given the value, uh, and for other ones like the p one, it's quite it's quite small, right? It's quite small. Yeah, our R squared is 0.579, so you know our our model here is doing some explaining, but boy, it could be a lot better. Um, we certainly wouldn't want to uh, you know testify to the fact that that these results are are perfect because <laughs> they're definitely not. Um, but but we're on the right track. We're on the right track. Uh, so to, as to the questions on the bottom, is this what we expected? Yeah. Does it require further refinement? Yeah. <laughs> All right, finally then for the last section, uh, this idea of dummy variables. Okay, a lot of times we want to use dummy, actually a, a real lot of the time, way more times than not, uh, we end up incorporating dummy variables into our model. And what dummy variables are is like switches, right? So if, you know, if there's a light switch on the wall over there, the light switch has an off position and an on position. Let's say I have a variable that I want to turn off or on. Okay, I can use a dummy variable application there to incorporate that idea into my regression. So like, let's say that, you know, I wanted to hypothesize like retail sales or something like that. And, you know, I know that people go crazy during the month of December. So maybe, maybe I, I expect the whole relationship to be different in December than it is every other month. Well, you know, maybe I'm gonna include a dummy variable that says, is the month December or not? And if it's December, then you know, you're gonna kind of shift to this on position and we're going to estimate the relationship totally differently. Okay. Uh, there are many, 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 many uses for dummy variables like this. Okay. Uh, so an estimated regression that utilizes a dummy variable might look something like this to the right. So we've got an intercept beta zero, and then we have beta one X, XI, so it's sort of a normal variable like we've, we've been discussing. And then we've got beta two, di okay so this is some dummy variable takes a value one when an observation occurs during a summer month and otherwise it takes on the value of zero so maybe like you know may june july august right that that beta two uh, is one right and and otherwise it's zero okay so you're gonna see that, right? You're gonna see that if you watch the other little video where I have, you know, show you how to get up and running in eViews, you're gonna notice that a lot of, in that sheet of data right at the beginning, there's a lot of zeros and ones uh, for things like, um, I wanna say one of them is a garage. So does the house have a garage, right? Okay, one, if it has a garage, it's one. If it doesn't have a garage, it's zero, right? Um, other one is a septic system, right? So this is housing data, right? So does the house is does the house hook to sewer or not, right? Okay, so it's it's either it's either one or the other. It's a dummy variable. Okay, okay. So as I said, dummy variables are sort of a switch um, to turn things on or off. Again, we'll be talking about these later in future uh, chapters. And uh, well, that's about it for now. Hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, again. Um, I was going to put uh, a segment in here on getting going in eViews, uh, um, running regressions, but but I decided this. I knew this was going to be long, right? And I already know made that one, so I know it's long too. So we just I split it in two, so you can have a look at that. It's another place. All right, cheers, everybody. Take care. See you next time.